so we're debriefing a bit about our trip to Haiti and I'm really glad that we're able to present a little bit of reflection for FT now that we're back and able to uh, kind of digest our trip a little bit more. So just a little bit of backstory about how um, this whole trip began. I was tagging along again with a group from California and and I asked if there was room for um, people that had talked to me at Free Church that wanted to come on this trip. Uh, and there was one or two spots. Um, so I did invite people that I knew were really interested. But um, some people couldn't make it and there was a bit of shuffling and there was always a lot of changes. I had to roll with a lot of punches with this trip. And then it was time to buy the plane tickets. Actually, our leader couldn't go anymore. It was on me to become the trip leader. I took Megan and Nick to uh, Foyer Renman. It's an orphanage near Port-au-Prince in Haiti. It was my second trip and I led it and I was just so happy to go back and so happy to continue um, building the relationships, which is what this is all about. It's not about building something or giving them something. It's showing them that um, these children, that God loves them and they're not forgotten about. And it's just taking the time to care for them and spend time with them. And I was really happy to introduce members of our church uh, to the orphanage. One of the activities we did with the children while we were there is um, we sang songs with them. We told them Bible stories uh, like Daniel in the Lion's Den. We made a puppet with them. We did some skits. And we also took them to the beach on our last day. We, some of the money that was fundraised for us, we used for that, as well as some of the members in California um, that were supposed to go on this trip and then couldn't. They um, generously gave us a lot of money to help with um, the beach trip. Because in Haiti, most of the beaches you actually have to pay for per person. It's about 2 to $40 American. <laughs> We also did uh, face painting with the kids and I also got to teach them some acrylic painting. We made some canvases that they're going to try to sell and each kid gets to keep the profits of that. Well, one of the best moments of this trip was sharing our testimonies. I actually didn't share my testimony the last time I went to Haiti. I, I'm always kind of timid about that and I'm never sure which moment to really share. Um, so I knew this time leading the trip I probably couldn't get away with that. Last time I got away with it because I was the translator. Um, this time yeah I had to share my testimony and I was nervous about that but Megan had a really great idea. Um, she said why don't we write it out as you know simple statements maybe five or seven and each statement on a little star and the kids will open it up and try to put them in order and we'll discuss them. And we'll discuss what you know God has done in our life. And so we did that actually one night. We waited till all the little kids um, had gone off to bed so we could really connect with the older girls. And we were starting to open up these little stars and they were, they were excited about, oh, what's in these stars? And then the power went out, <laughs> which happens frequently. So we had to use our flashlights. And it was just so neat to open these little stars under the real stars in Haiti. And the kids actually really enjoyed it. They enjoyed learning our testimonies. They thanked us for it. Um, my testimony was about um, how God showed up when I was facing um, the death of a friend. Megan's was about um, bullying and they really connected and really, really related to hers. And, and Nick was about um, heaven and his life too. And they thanked us for our testimonies. and. That was just really great. It was a really great time to connect with them. After we shared our testimonies, we actually sung a song. It's a classic song we sing at Free Church, Let Us Drink Wine Together. So we taught that song to them in English, and they loved it. And it was so neat to have a bit of Free Church there in Haiti with the kids. Moi, 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 moi,
quitté, fais ça avec moi. Moi, même moi, la guerre, non, mais le Seigneur me quitté, fais ça avec moi. When we were washing the children's feet, uh, I I had a really I was having a really bad week. I just had gotten um, chikungunya fever, uh, so I was I had like a really bad headache. It was like 35 degrees out. It was you know super humid. I had uh, a really bad viral rash. The mosquito bites were all over the place. Uh, but uh, the little the, the children were having a great time splashing around in the water. Uh, we're tickling their feet, and you know that kind of put me in a better mood. And uh, and really, the uh, the older kids did. I really feel they really did understand uh, symbolically what we were trying to do for them, and, and the way that we were reaching out to them. Um, we ended up reading the, the the few verses where it talks about. Uh, Jesus washing his disciples' feet, and literally, like we were saying it in English, and they understood it, and literally, they like completed the verse in uh, Haitian Creole. <laughs> Amen. Bonne I really think that our trip to Haiti um, will be a catalyst to something more in my life um, that would, I really hope and desire, would include the, the involvement of my children and my husband. It just spurred me into action where I've been a little bit, I, I wouldn't dare say dormant, but um, I've been in a little bit of a coasting zone because I've, I've had my three kids, my youngest is three now, and uh, it, it's just been hard to engage in, um, in real action things in the church and actually being encouraged by Cyril to take the plunge and take a trip. Uh, so I've been very blessed by that and I really think that God's going to use that. Certainly really hope to have long-term friendships with uh, Florence, the, the head director of Foyer Renman, and uh, of course the all the kids that are there now. I, I still pray for them daily. They come to my heart by name. Um, they haven't left me. And also I'm trying to coordinate, you know, um, digital pen pals, I guess you would say, between my local school where the boys go to here in Toronto. They have a French immersion program and I'm trying to connect uh, Florence, who is very positive and hopeful about that, to engage her kids and join them online so that they can actually talk um, back and forth uh, in French and practice their English for them. So, you know, that's just one of the many ways I really hope to stay connected to Haiti. I don't think this is the end for, for me in that country and especially with that family there in Haiti. Um, it's been a wonderful time for me to kind of, God, kind of blow my eyes open and see what's out there and the potential of us being useful and so I'm really thankful for that. I think these trips really do challenge you to uh, love one another and I mean in a way every day is kind of like a mission trip, every, every day of your life is like a mission trip I guess but in those scenarios, you're under a lot more stress. Like you're you're thinking about that mission. Like that's the first thing in your mind. It's not like the last thing in your mind. So it's it's kind of like your your life is switched in that sense.
I'd love to go back in a year's time and maybe I will see you there. If you have any questions, you want to talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, um, please get in touch with me. I would love to talk to you. Your love, I got you me. Oh my God, this love, I can't be. Na 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 na